Like many 20-year-olds, Corrine Huddleston was always on her phone. So in early October, when she suddenly stopped communicating, her family knew something was wrong. For her to stop communication, Facebook, all of that was no, that was not normal behavior. For several weeks, police searched for Corrine. She was last seen leaving a house in Prince George, Virginia. Then on November 12th, a month after she disappeared, Corrine's remains were found in a wooded area in Surrey County. Corrine's body was found near the home of 31-year-old Benjamin Sharkey, who was taken into custody the same day and charged with her murder. Police say the suspect and victim were, quote, familiar with each other. But what Corrine may not have known is that Sharkey was a convicted rapist who had been let out of prison early for good behavior. Sharkey was convicted of abducting and raping a 14-year-old girl in 2007. He was sentenced to 25 years, but ended up serving less than six. Corrine is, is deeply missed, and this is very unfortunate. And as the family, you know, we can't help but be angered at the justice system because, like I said, 25 years and, and to serve less than six years for your sentence for, for raping and abducting a 14-year-old young lady is, is unimaginable. Corrine Huddleston's stepmom says Corrine herself should have been in jail, and if she had, she'd still be alive. Huddleston pled guilty to the sale of and distribution of marijuana in February 2020. She was sentenced to 12 months, but 11 of those months were suspended. She would have been left in jail. She wouldn't have been in this position, but if he would have been left in prison, she wouldn't have been in this position. So, you know, it's not, I'm not just him, it's anybody. She should have still been in jail when this happened. Benjamin Chiarchi was also arrested on a felony drug charge and failure to comply with the terms and conditions of probation. He's currently being held at the Riverside Regional Jail in Virginia with no bond. You know, I always say this about sex offenders, that they don't get better, they get worse. And, and you see it way too often, this escalation. And here's someone who's an alleged model prisoner and now gets out and once again in trouble. This time, though, the victim doesn't survive. Let's bring in Court TV anchor Ted Rollins. Uh, Ted, the part that's got everybody kind of fuming tonight about this story is the sentence was 25 years, which sounds appropriate for the rape of a 14, rape and abduction of a 14-year-old girl, but less than six served? Yeah, it's, it's a real head-scratcher, Vinny. He was sentenced the, the 25 years. Um, he was 18 years old at the time, the victim of 14-year-old. At first, he denied it, and then eventually... They came to a deal, the sentence, and for some reason, they suspended 17 of those 25 years. That left him with an eight-year prison sentence. And as you said, he had great behavior, apparently, behind bars. Um, that knocks another two years off of it. And six years is all he did for raping uh, and abducting a 14-year-old, as you said, child, girl, hey, not adult there's no consent. Um, he's 18. She was 14 at the time. That's a huge difference. Um, you know, uh, I've got a 16 year old and I'll tell you, 14 to 18 is miles apart. Um, and the fact that whoever decided to suspend 17 years of this 25 year um, sentence got it wrong, obviously. Um, and this family is just hurting. You can only imagine the pain and the anger to know that had they just adjudicated this properly, this guy would have been in prison for an extended period of time. Their daughter, their loved one uh, would be alive. Absolutely. You know, the, the part of it is maybe there were some issues with the 14 year old having to testify if there was a trial. Maybe it was part of the deal. But on top of the 17 years that were suspended, right, you're supposed to hold that over the defendant's head. So you ever get in trouble again, you get to serve those 17 years. Yeah, but someone's dead. Is, is the model inmate, right, a sex offender as a model? Well, there's no 14-year-old girls to abduct in the male prison. So, of course, he's going to be a model, right. yeah, model inmate. Uh, let's talk about other charges here related to all this. What do you have? Well, he's also charged with a felony drug uh, charge, and then he is charged with uh, violating the order of his um, bail, his probation, basically, failure to comply. Um, you know, that's 
nothing in the grand scheme of things. Now he's facing a murder charge. He's being held without bond. And um, it's just one of these stories where you, the system just did get it wrong. You know, just one of those stories because here he is, he's out. And to your point, they've got the 17 years holding over his head. Well, that means uh, regular visits, I would assume, with a probation officer. Uh, he is either dealing drugs or is using drugs. How, how did that fall through the cracks? Um, and then even his victim, and you know, you picked, I don't know if you picked it up in this story, it's a very strange set of circumstances. The victim in this case, uh, Ms. Huddleston, she was also found guilty of felony drug possession. Um, and they let her out after a month. And her, her mom said, gosh, if, if, if they'd have just kept my own daughter in in jail, they uh, she'd be alive, too. Now, that's just just that's a strange set of circumstances. But it adds to the pain that this family's feeling. It, it really does. And, you know, it emphasizes another point. You know, we, we talk about. You know, people getting out early, the jails are overcrowded. Well, sometimes there's a reason why people are in prison and are in jails. What do we know about the relationship here between uh, the defendant and the victim? It's odd. There's some sort of connection. Um, the family's not sure of it. He, she never spoke about him, about Benjamin Sharkey. However, the sheriff um, in Prince George County, the police chief, said, yeah, he... They believe that they were familiar with each other is the is how they're framing it. But we don't know. Is it a boyfriend, girlfriend situation? Was it were they both involved in this, uh, the peddling of the marijuana? We just don't know. They haven't released that information. But it wasn't a random, according to investigators, um, a random meeting between these two. There was some sense of familiarity that a likely Sharky presumably um, used to either lure or connect with the victim. It's a maddening case, but uh, extremely tragic at the same time. Court TV anchor Ted Rollins, thank you so much. You bet.